Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss about the nerve supply of the abdomen. In this session, we will be discussing about very two important plexus and they are the celiac plexus and the lumbar plexus. So both are very important five marks. Out of this lumbar plexus is asked as a part of the essay in this year supplementary exam. So please listen to the video fully as both of them are very important five marks. So let's first discuss about the celiac plexus. So celiac plexus is the largest autonomic nerve plexus of the posterior abdominal wall. This celiac plexus is also known as the solar plexus because of its radiating nerve fibers. So just like the sun rays, the celiac plexus has a radiating nerve fibers. So this is the reason why the celiac plexus is also known as the solar plexus. And if you guys look at the location of the celiac plexus, so it is located in front of the abdominal iota. So this is the abdominal iota and if you guys look at the celiac plexus, it is located in front of the abdominal iota around the celiac trunk and the origin of the superior mesenteric artery. So if you guys watch the previous video of the blood supply of the abdomen, uh, I'll be uh, clearly explaining about the celiac trunk and the superior mesenteric artery. So at the level of T12 and the L1 vertebrae, so the celiac plexus is located around the celiac trunk. And if you guys look at the sagittal section of the abdomen, the celiac plexus is located uh, behind the stomach and the lesser sac. So if you guys look at the diagram, this is the stomach and this is the lesser sac. So just below, behind the uh, stomach and the lesser sac, the celiac plexus is located. And we all know that the pancreas lies at the level of L1. So at the superior border of the pancreas the celiac ganglion along with the celiac plexus is located so this is about the location of the celiac plexus so it is situated in front of the abdominal iota at the level between t12 and l1 it is uh, just above the superior border of the pancreas and behind the stomach and the lesser sac and if you guys look at the formation of the celiac plexus it is formed by two celiac ganglions and uh, numerous nerve fibers. So this is how the celiac plexus is formed. So the celiac ganglion in turn has two parts, large upper part and the small lower part. So this is the diagram of celiac plexus. So this is the celiac ganglion. So it has two parts, large upper part and a small uh, lower part. The small lower part is also known as aorticorenal ganglion. So if you guys... Uh, just look at the celiac plexus it is made up of two celiac ganglion and nerve fibers so celiac ganglion in turn has two parts large upper part and small lower part and if you guys look at the nerve fibers there are three sets of nerve fibers in the celiac plexus and they are the sympathetic fibers parasympathetic fibers and general visceral afferent fibers so we are going to discuss about each and every fibers briefly now about the sympathetic fibers. The greatest plasmic nerve which arises from the thoracic 5th to 9th ganglion, it joins the upper part of the celiac ganglion. While the lesser plasmic nerve which arises from the thoracic 9th to thoracic 11th ganglion, it joins the lower part of the celiac ganglion that is the aorticorenal ganglion. So these uh, fibers arises as a preganglionic fibers and synapses in the uh, celiac and the aorticorenal ganglion and then it leaves as a postsynaptic fibers from the ganglion. So this is all about the sympathetic fibers. For the sympathetic fibers you have to remember the splanchnic nerve. Sympathetic for splanchnic nerve. Greater splanchnic nerve and the lesser splanchnic nerve. Let's move on to the parasympathetic fibers. The parasympathetic fibers uh, contains the vagal fibers derived from the posterior vagal trunk which will be containing both the right and left vagus nerve. As we all know the parasympathetic fibers represents the vagal fibers and the general visceral and afferent fibers or the sensory phrenic fibers which reaches the plexus along the inferior phrenic artery. So this is all about the three sets of fibers. Sympathetic which contains the greater splanchnic and the lesser splanchnic nerve. Parasympathetic fibers which contains the vagal fibers from the posterior vagal trunk. Which contains both right and left vagus nerve. And the general visceral afferent fibers which includes the sensory phrenic fibers. Which uh, accompanies the corresponding artery that is the inferior phrenic artery. 
this is all about the fibers and now let's discuss about the branches of the celiac plexus so now the celiac plexus gives off numerous secondary plexus which will be supplying the abdomen and also the gonads so if you guys look at the branches it gives off phrenic plexus for the diaphragm hepatic plexus for the liver left gastric plexus for the stomach and phrenic plexus for the spleen suprarenal and renal plexus for the suprarenal glands and kidneys testicular and ovarian plexus for the gonads and finally the superior mesenteric inferior mesenteric and intermesenteric plexus which will be distributed across the corresponding arteries so these are the branches of the celiac plexus and out of this hepatic plexus is the largest is secondary plexus of the celiac plexus so let's now discuss about the branches a little bit first is the phrenic plexus so most of the plexus accompanies the corresponding artery so just like that phrenic plexus is also accompanied by the inferior phrenic artery to the diaphragm and also receives one or two branches from the phrenic nerve and hepatic plexus which is the largest is secondary celiac plexus it can be asked as an mcq and uh, it is accompanied it is accompanied by the hepatic artery to the liver gall bladder and the bile duct so the parasympathetic fibers or vagal fibers will be motor to the musculature of the uh, gall bladder and inhibited to the sphincter of the gall bladder so remember the parasympathetic fibers is inhibited to the sphincter of the gall bladder and left gastric plexus which will be accompanying the left gastric artery and it provides sympathetic fibers which will be motor to the sphincter and uh, about the splenic plexus the splenic plexus accompanies the splenic artery to the spleen and the suprarenal plexus which will be anastomosing with the chromaffin cells of the adrenal medulla and renal plexus uh, which supplies the kidney and the upper part of ureter and testicular plexus which will be accompanying the testicular artery it supplies testis in addition to testis it also supplies the vas deferens and the epididymis so just like that ovarian plexus also accompanies the ovarian artery and supplies ovary in addition to ovary it supplies the uterine tube and uh, finally the superior mesenteric inferior mesenteric and intermesenteric plexus superior mesenteric plexus located around the superior mesenteric artery and supply the superior mesenteric territory while the inferior mesenteric plexus distributed to the territory of the inferior mesenteric artery so as the name indicates the intermesenteric plexus situated in front of the aorta between the origin of superior and inferior mesenteric artery so intermesenteric plexus between the origin of superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric artery and it is continuous below with the superior hypogastric plexus so these are all the branches of the uh, celiac plexus and uh, then about the clinical anatomy part so celiac plexus block so it is the procedure used to for pain relief from the abdominal condition such as pancreatitis crohn's disease and more so it is a pain relieving procedure so what does this uh, block will exactly do means it prevents the nerve of the abdominal plexus from transmitting pain signals to the brain so if you guys block the celiac plexus nerve plexus then it blocks the nerves of the abdominal plexus from sending the pain signals to the brain so it is a pain relieving procedure so this is all about the celiac plexus and now let's discuss about the lumbar plexus so now let's discuss about the lumbar plexus so lumbar plexus is formed within the substance of the psoas major muscle so it is very important mcq it is formed within the substance of the psoas major muscle and it is formed by the union of ventral ramae of l1 to l3 nerves and the large upper part of ventral ramae of l4 nerve so you, uh, you guys have to mention that only the uh, large upper part of ventral ramae of l4 nerve forms the lumbar plexus while the smallest lower part of the ventral ramus of l4 nerve joins with the s1 to form the lumbosacral trunk which contributes to the sacral plexus but not the lumbar plexus so only l1 l2 l3 and l4 out of this only large upper part of l4 nerve involves in the lumbar plexus since the l4 nerve since the ventral ramae of the l4 nerve forms a connecting link between the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus it is known as nerve furcalis so it is also for important for mcq so the ventral ramae of the l4 nerve is also known as 
nerve wire furcalis because of the reason it forms a connecting link between the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus the ventral rami of the l4 nerve the upper part forms the lumbar plexus and the lower part forms the sacral plexus so it's all about the introduction of the lumbar plexus so now let's discuss about the branches of the lumbar plexus so as i have told you guys the lumbar plexus is formed by the ventral rami of l1 l2 l3 and l4 some tweaks of subcostal nerve t12 nerve is also involved in this lumbar plexus so first the subcostal nerve gives off a tweak to the l1 nerve and now it divides into two branches and they are the large upper part and a small lower part the large upper part gives off two branches and they are the iliohypogastric nerve and the ilioinguinal nerve okay let me tell you again the t12 nerve which is a subcostal nerve gives off tweaks to the l1 nerve which divides into two part large upper part and a small lower part the large upper part gives off two two nerve branches and they are the iliohypogastric and ilioinguinal nerve while the small lower part joins with the l2 to forms the genitofemoral nerve so the l the lower part of uh, l1 with the l2 nerve forms the genitofemoral nerve and now the dorsal division of l2 and l3 gives off lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh so dorsal division remember dorsal division lateral cutaneous uh, nerve of thigh is formed by the dorsal division of l2 and l3 now let's discuss about two principal nerves of the lumbar plexus and one is the femoral nerve and another one is the obturator nerve these two are the principal branches of the lumbar plexus the l2 l3 and l4 gives off joints and gives off two divisions dorsal division and the ventral division the dorsal division forms the femoral nerve while the ventral division forms the obturator nerve so the l2 l3 l4 together joins and gives off femoral nerve and the obturator nerve obturator nerve and also an another nerve which is the um, accessory obturator nerve is formed by the ventral division of the l3 and l4 alone not l2 involved so obturator nerve l2 l3 l4 while the uh, accessory obturator nerve only l3 and l4 so there are only two nerves formed by the dorsal division and one is the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh formed by the dorsal division of l2 and l3 and another one is the femoral nerve which is formed by the dorsal division of l2 l3 and l4 so remember the two dorsal divisions remaining every one remaining every nerves uh, ilioinguinal iliohypogastric genitofemoral obturator and accessory obturator nerve are formed by the ventral divisions okay so this is all about the branches of the lumbar plexus so we can also remember the branches name by a mnemonic igloo for all so not this igloo just remember the spelling alone igloo for all which represents the branches name and uh, they are the ilio hypogastric ilio inguinal genito femoral and lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh obturator nerve femoral nerve and accessory obturator nerve so also remember the root values which can be asked as in a part of the mcq and uh, very important mcq is only two nerves and they are the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh and the femoral nerve are formed by the dorsal division while the remaining will be formed by the ventral division so this is about the branches i have already mentioned in the diagram so please remember the diagram the diagram will be sufficient to answer the lumbar plexus and now about the iliohypogastric nerve so iliohypogastric nerve is a cutaneous nerve that supplies the anterior abdominal wall in the hypogastric region as the name indicates the hypogastric region so iliohypogastric nerve is a cutaneous nerve that supplies the anterior abdominal wall in the hypogastric region and skin of the gluteal region and now about the ilioinguinal nerve so ilioinguinal nerve uh, has two innervations and they are the motor innervation which uh, supplies the internal oblique and the transverse abdominis muscle while the sensory innervation to the skin of the medial aspect of the thigh and also to the root of penis and scrotum in males mons pubis and labia majus in females for the ilioinguinal nerve we have to remember both the innervations motor innervation to the internal oblique and transverse abdominis muscle and sensory innervation to the skin of medial aspect of the thigh 
and the uh, root of penis and scrotum in males mons pubis and labia major in females and for genito femoral nerve as the name indicates it has two branches genital branch and the femoral branch the genital branch supplies the skin of mons pubis and labia major in female and the cremaster muscle and scrotal skin in males femoral branch directly uh, supply the skin over the femoral triangle as the name indicate it supplies the skin over the femoral triangle so the genito femoral nerve so femoral branch of genito femoral nerve supplies the skin over the femoral triangle is asked as a mcq so remember that femoral branch of the genito femoral nerve not the genital branch just only the femoral branch supplies the skin over the femoral triangle while the genital branch supplies the skin over the genitals and now about the lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh as the name indicates uh, it supplies a cutaneous innervation to the upper lateral aspect of the thigh and the principal two principal nerves and they are the femoral nerve and the obturator nerve we will be discussing the femoral nerve and the obturator nerve separately in the lower limb part but now the remember that the femoral nerve which is a nerve of the lower limb it supplies the anterior compartment of the thigh while the obturator nerve is a nerve of the medial compartment of the thigh and the accessory obturator nerve is present in only 30% of the subject and it provides communicating branch to the obturator nerve especially the anti division of the obturator nerve as the name indicates accessory obturator nerve uh, helps in uh, providing a commuting, communicating branch to the anti division of the obturator nerve so now let's discuss two important mcq about the lumbar plexus all the statement about the lumbar plexus are correct except so you have to find the wrong statement about the lumbar plexus so option a it is formed by the ventral rami of the upper four lumbar nerves yeah it is correct statement because it is formed by the ventral rami of l1 l2 l3 and l4 it lies within the substance of psoas major muscle this is also a correct statement about the lumbar plexus it communicates with the subcostal nerve which is a t12 nerve this is also a correct statement so you can easily guess the option must be d yeah it divides the psoas major muscle into two planes is a wrong statement because the lumbar plexus does not divide the psoas major into two planes okay this is about the first mcq so the option is d it does not divide the psoas major muscle into two planes but it lies within the substance of psoas major muscle and the second question all of the following branches of the lumbar plexus emerges from the lateral border of the psoas major muscle except so i forgot to mention you this uh, only obturator nerve and the accessory obturator nerve emerges from the medial border so remaining uh, all other branches emerges from the lateral border of the psoas major muscle so the ilio hypogastric nerve ilio inguinal nerve genito femoral nerve lateral cutaneous nerve of thigh every other nerves emerges beneath the lateral border of the psoas major muscle only the obturator nerve and the accessory obturator nerve emerges beneath the medial border so in the option the obturator nerve will be the answer because it does not emerges from the lateral border of the psoas major muscle so thank you for listening this is all about the lumbar plexus and the celiac plexus hope you guys understand well thank you